Peace, brothers and sisters. This is Hua Qi. Thank God, it is time again for our Bible reading. Today we will do an introduction for Exodus. The name Exodus comes from the first word in this book in Israelite Torah. It carried out the blessings and prophecies in Genesis chapter forty-nine, which Jacob had for his twelve sons. Jacob, in his old age, was very spiritual. He was in line with God and understood God's will. Thus, his prophecies for his twelve sons set the base for the future history of Israelites. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Through Jesus, God's only begotten Son, God gave him as a gift to all as a ransom. Thus, Genesis forty-nine, Jacob's prophecies. Also set the direction for the entire humanity. Human history, on one hand, is about things happening while men are on earth. On the other hand, the H in history is capitalized, and it is happening according to the will of God, which is His story. In Greek Septuagint, this book was renamed as Exodus, which means exit. The Chinese translation added the word Egypt. Egypt represents the world. Exodus is exiting the world. Genesis begins with God's glorious creation. The glorious God created man to exhibit His glory. However, man fell again and again. Meanwhile, it brings forth God's promises and His grace. In Genesis, it described. How the man, who God called, left behind a good history by God's grace. However, at the end of Genesis, it is a bit jarring. In chapter fifty, Jacob died. So did Joseph. It seemed God's work on earth had lost its hope. Thus, Exodus was needed to extend Genesis. Exodus began with Israelites living under slavery. Yet God did not forget them. God remembered the names and began to do something to deliver them from slavery. On the contrary to Genesis, Exodus seems to begin with hopelessness. God's people were enslaved. Yet, even under these circumstances, God revealed to men His will, His purpose, and His plan. God wanted to win a group of people to be His testimony, His dwelling. And his glory, Exodus ended with God's tabernacle be- being built, and God's glory filled it. Thus, as we read Exodus, we needed to pay attention to God's continuous work on man and His continuous higher and higher revelation for man. Unlike in Genesis, where God won the spiritual giant one by one, in Exodus, God wanted to win a group of people. At that time, this group was Israelites. Today, it is the church. Thus, the entire Exodus is a process which God, which told how God won the group. First, God won a man, Moses. Through Moses, God led the Israelites out of Egypt and entered into wilderness. There, God revealed His will to Moses and then to all Israelites. Moses did everything according to what God revealed to him in the mountain. He led Israelites to build the tabernacle so God could dwell among them. The Exodus told us again and again that God loves to reveal Himself to us. He loves to live with man, so man will become His testimony and exhibit His glory. Dear brothers and sisters, our entire life is a life of Exodus. It begins with our baptism because of our faith in God. Then we will cross the Red Sea, Red sea and enter into the wilderness to receive the supply from God's word. God's purpose is to receive glory from us. Our life need to continually Exodus from sins, from the world, from our nature. Preferences and from our nature selection, at the end, God could completely win us over. 
the entire Exodus has 40 chapters. It can be divided roughly into two parts. First part is from chapter 1 to 23. Its theme is letting my people go. The second part is from chapter 24 to 40. Its theme is letting me dwell among my people. In the first part, the first and second chapter described the situation that the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt at that time. It also indicates that us, the saints in New Testament time, are also enslaved by the world, by sin and flesh. In this sad situation, God called one man, Moses, which means out of water. Every one of us is poured out of water by God, so we can be saved by grace. The Bible described Moses as very humble and faithful in all God's house. Moses is also a great example for every saint who is willing to serve the church. From chapter 2 to 15, it described how Moses negotiated with Pharaoh under God's leading and experienced many miracles. At the end, Pharaoh had to let the Israelites go. The most important thing in this Egyptian rescue process was recorded in Exodus chapter 12, verse, verse 2 to 13. It talked about how the Passover was established. It was also the last and the most serious disaster for Egypt. God would send destroyer to kill all the firstborn in Egypt. Before this, he told the Israelites about it through Moses. Chapter 12, verse 6. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill the lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. Because the destroyer will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When the destroyer sees the blood will pass over you. This is the origin of Passover. After the lamb is killed, the blood needed to be put on the sides and top tops of the door frames of the house. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and the bread made without yeast. After that, they will leave Egypt in a hurry. From the New Testament, we know that the lamp is the foreshadow of Jesus. Thus, when Jesus first began his ministry on earth, John the Baptist declared as soon as he saw him, Look, the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. Man sinned. The wages of sin is death. God sacrificed his only begotten son to be the lamp of atonement. When God sees the blood of lamp, which is Jesus' blood shed on the cross, he passes over those who have the blood on them. God no longer remembers our sins. On the other hand, the flesh of the lamb is real food. What is the flesh of the lamb? It is the word of Jesus. It becomes our spiritual food. After eating of it, we can leave Egypt early. Israelites left Egypt and entered into wilderness. God first led them to the desert of Sinai. There, God revealed the purpose of exiting Egypt. This was recorded in Exodus 19, uh, verse 4 to 6. Verse 4. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God chose Israelites from all nations to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. He wants to lead all nations on earth back to God through Israel. For this divine will and purpose, he promised 
the Ten Commandments in Exodus twenty. The first four commandments are about the relationship between man and God. The rest are about the relationship between men. All of the Israelites failed, not accomplishing what God called them. The Ten Commandments, especially the part about human relationships, become the basis for the laws in all nations. Through the law, man can be preserved until New Testament time. Then God will send His only begotten Son to the world. Man can be saved because of the gospel. The second part of Exodus, chapter twenty-four to forty, is the center of God's will. It is about God willing to dwell among His people. In Mount Sinai, God described in details. To Moses, how to build the tabernacle. It also revealed God's will to dwell among men. These seventeen verses are in great details. It is a pity that most of the saints skip this part because of lacking not understanding. It is a pity. The Old Testament describes a picture from the descriptions of the tabernacle in these seventeen chapters. If you have the spiritual light. You can see that it is the best blueprint of how to build the church today. It is the exact revelation from God to Moses in Mount Sinai. Thus, today the church needs to be built exactly the same as it was described in the mountain in its size, color, material. God did not leave any room for Moses, but have him to do exactly as he said. It is the same today in building the church. If we truly know God's will, we should know that man's wisdom, ability, preferences are useless when building a church. It has to be based on what God had revealed. There was a door at the east side of Tabernacle. This door represents Jesus, who is our entrance. It is to say that everyone who enters the church needs to enter the gate of Jesus. He needs to believe in Him. Once you enter the tabernacle, the first thing you see is the altar of burnt offering. This indicates that everyone who was saved by grace begins his church life. The first thing to do is to offer burnt burnt offering. On one hand, Jesus has become our atoning sacrifice, so we can be acceptable to God. On the other hand, when we come to the church life, it is like what Paul said in Romans chapter twelve, verse one. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Thus, those who are saved by grace come to the church life need to offer themselves. After offering yourself, if you walk further, you will see the basin for washing. This is to help us to be washed clean. Thus, every one of us could have clean hands and a pure heart, so we can enter the holy place. Once you enter the holy place, you see the showbread table. It indicates that Jesus' words are the supplies for our life. Through reading His words, our life will grow. On the other side is the golden lampstand, which. Was hammered out from one talent gold. This indicates that when we read God's words, God's light shines on us. These, His words start to hammer and make us like the golden lamp stand, which is the exhibition of God's glory. Walking further inside, you come to the altar of incense. Only to this point, a man can work with God. The trouble of a church faces is. That most of the saints come to the church first, not to offer themselves, and second, not washing themselves; third, not eating God's words; and fourth, not being made by Holy Spirit. Only through all these you can work with God. How to work with God? The altar of incense represents our prayers. God does not ask a lot from us. He wants us to submit to His. Will if a man do not know God, he is full of flesh and nature. Thus, a lot of work done in the church are not what God wanted, nor pleasing to Him, because God's purpose is the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holy. He wants men to be His testimony. The Ark of Covenant is the Ark of Testimony. We ask God to help us to know that 
God's will is to dwell among His people. Let every one of us coming to live the church life know that the beginning of our service is Christ. The content and process of our service must be Christ. Our end goal is to bring glory to Christ. Let's pray. Lord, help us. On one hand, we can exit us from all things and answer to only your call and follow only you. Please help us as we serve so we can recognize and understand your will. At the end, you can receive glory from us. Help me so I can be the Christian who try hard to please you, and so your work will be rooted in me. Let me be your beautiful testimony. In Jesus' name, amen.